I'm not in charge tonight, so I mean. Second Corinthians chapter 3, just to point a scripture that guides us as we worship, and we'll look at 17 and 18. Media, please help me. Second Corinthians chapter 3, please. 17 and 18. The Bible says, Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, the Bible says there is liberty. Do you believe that? Yes. Verse 18 now, it says, but we all. How many of us? Yes. So this experience that you are about to understand is for everybody. Paul says, we all. Um, there are matters that when he's discussing, he will say some. For instance, he gave on to some apostles and prophets. But now in this experience, he says we all. That is a corporate experience that involves everyone. He says with open face, beholding us in a glass. Some versions will say a mirror, the glory of the Lord. He says are changed. Watch this into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the lord i just want to point out two things in this scripture just to guide us as we worship number one the bible says we behold the glory of the lord the word behold does not mean to look around the word behold means look forward it then means whatever you are beholding must be in front of you the law of beholding mandates that whatever you are beholding must be in front of you. You cannot behold ordinarily what is behind you. It means you must place priority on whatever it is you are beholding. Are we together? You must be submissive enough to step back and allow that which you are beholding to be in front of you. So the Bible says we behold him. That means if you are to behold him, you must place priority to always keep him in front of you. You cannot behold what you are ahead of. Hallelujah. Yes. It says one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind and looking, reaching forward to the things that are before me. You only behold the things that are before you. The Bible now says, back to that scripture please, that when we behold, very interesting, back to 2 Corinthians, my dear people, it says the glory of God, it says we all are changed. Very profound scripture. We all are changed. This is a strange kind of mirror because physics teaches us that every time you look at a mirror, you see yourself, not what the mirror wants. The mirror has no power over what is projected. In physics, it is the object that controls the image. But this kind of mirror is a very strange mirror because when you look at it, it changes the object. Are we together now? So the Bible says when you behold the glory, it is not the mirror that changes. It is the object looking at the mirror that starts to change until you become a perfect reflection of the mirror. That means one of the ways to change is to take whatever you do not like and bring it in front of the mirror. Because the moment you bring anything that does not look like that mirror, the mandate upon that mirror is to keep changing the object. So a sick object in front of that mirror must become a healed object because it, does, it will not be consistent. Are we together now? So one of the ways that God transmutes his power is creating a system whereby the saints gaze on him continually. Continually. When the serpent was destroying God's people in the Old Testament, a brazen serpent was lifted and he said there are two kinds of serpents you will choose to look at. The one about to hurt you or the one lifted by faith for your freedom. And that if you can ignore the one that is around you, regardless proximity, and you focus on the one lifted, the one around you will have no power. Hallelujah. So they were left with two options. To look at the serpent that was about to strike them 
or to look at the one that had been lifted as an instruction. And the Bible says, as many who looked at that brazen serpent, they lived. So we all, worship is one of the prophetic platforms that has been created by God for the saints to reach and to gaze. When we gaze and look at the beauty of his glory, the Bible says it has an effect on the object. Very strange expression. If I stand before the mirror, I do not see what the mirror wants. Hallelujah. I see myself. And if I'm not satisfied with anything, I correct myself and then it happens in the mirror. But spiritually speaking, the Bible now says this mirror has such power that a sick you can stand in front of it. A weak you, a defeated you can stand in front. And that whilst you worship, you may not even be aware of the transitions that are happening. You will check and no longer find the former version of you because that glory has metamorphosed you. And how many of you know that when you study in biology, metamorphosis demands not only a change of state, but also a change of features. When there are things you will find in the egg, the larva that you will not find in the pupa, you will not find in the adult insect. Are we together? So metamorphosis will demand sometimes increase in size, sometimes additional features that were not in the prior state. For instance, you do not find the lava having wings, but when it becomes an adult, it can fly. So when you behold him in worship, it is important for you to understand the things that are happening to you, that a weak defeated you whilst beholding the glory of God, you can encounter several things. For others, wisdom. For others, faith. For others, strength. For others, inspiration. For others, hope. Hallelujah. It then means you know that you have worshipped not because the song is over. You know that you have worshipped when you change. The song can be over and yet you have not worshipped. It is not the length of the song that determines your worship. It is the spiritual transaction that happens. So it is possible to have a song that lasts one hour and at the end of it you are still the same person who started that song. You did not worship, you only sang. When you truly worship, you know, not just because you exhausted the length of the song, but that at the end of that song, at the end of that, that platform for worship, you should not find the former you again. The weak you should be lost in worship. The sick you should be lost in worship. The defeated you should be lost in worship. The discouraged you should be lost in worship. Are we together? The hopeless you should be lost in worship. The faithless you should be lost in worship. That at the end of that worship, the hiding Gideon should become a warrior. At the end of that worship, the weak Esther, Hadassah, should now be prepared to be queen before Ahasuerus. At the end of that worship, even if you are the woman holding the alabaster box, that she carried everything. She did not just carry her treasure. In that pot was also her pain her shame, her disappointment. The Bible never said she poured some. It's a risk to keep the rest. She broke it because she did not want certain experiences again. The only thing we know is treasure that we call costly. I want you to know that pain also has a cost. Everything that was costly in her life, including her pain, her shame, her disappointments, she poured it in that bottle and broke it before him and used her glory, her hair, to clean the feet of Jesus and said, this is how far I can go because I want to be changed. Jesus was not changed from that experience. As she beheld him, it was her who changed. As Jacob beheld him, it was not the man that changed. It was Jacob who changed and became evil. Israel. It says, for as a prince, you have had power with God and you have prevailed. It's important that I introduce this so that you know that the people who have come to stir up this atmosphere and to lead us in worship and those who are yet to lead us, their assignment here is to help you and to call you into that realm where we all together. Remember, it says, but we all. 
Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa, we all. Poor you, weak you, defeated you, we all. Disappointed you, frustrated you, we all. So we come as we are, but we are never allowed to go back the way we are. He says, come, follow me, and I will make you. Follow me, and I will make you. To follow means to insist that is ahead. Is someone learning now? So that as we worship, don't just sing, change. As we worship, don't just lie down, change. Don't just stand up, change. For someone, change can mean to you reprioritize the position of God in your life. Because God is in your life, but maybe number 30, maybe number 25, other things being first. So change for you can mean that in this atmosphere of worship, you are coming up with resolutions by the Spirit to take Jesus back to his rightful place. For someone else, change for you may mean that there is a grace and a sound of worship locked up within your spirit and you have allowed the name speakings of people to not allow you rise and emerge because they have looked at you and said can anything good come out of nazareth that while you are watching this man minister the spirit of god tells you they were not supposed to be the only one you would have joined them if you had stayed in your training so change for you would mean to summon the courage and begin a journey in the school of the spirit Spirit, that this former version of you would have to transit into a version that can serve his grace to the nations for someone change may mean to allow your laxity spiritually to be swallowed up by a new zeal passion for God like never before an insistence to know him an insistence to rise and ascend in the spirit for someone change may mean to allow everything that becomes a limitation to your spiritual advancement to die in this worship. For someone change can mean that you bring an end to spiritual barrenness because there is a womb in your spirit and yet it has not been able to carry a child. There are dreams and visions that should be in your womb by now but simply because that spiritual intercourse has not happened, you are still experiencing barrenness. Change may mean let your womb be open to receive the visions that must be birthed in the spirit. For someone, change may mean that you replace allegiance and the governments that you have chosen to submit yourself to. Change can mean for you to make up your mind tonight that as you worship, you declare his lordship over your life once and for all. In whatever case and whatever it means to you, insist that at the end of this worship experience, I must change. But we all, he says, beholding him as in a mirror, we are changed. In a few minutes, I'll step down and the next set of worship will begin. Perhaps you missed out in the former sets and as they worshipped and pressed, revealing the depth of their secret places. For many of us, maybe you were distracted by the glitz and the glamour. And thank God for that. Here is another session we're about to step into. And God is giving you another opportunity to now worship with understanding and insist that you change. Hallelujah. And to all who are connected across the globe, let me encourage you.